Honey, also 9.1 deals with what we call the composition of functions. So new symbolism for you. So here we go. We're gonna to try to show you what I mean by composition of functions. So I got two cases. Case number one, almost looks like fog, but that's like a F and then it's not an O in there. It's almost like a, a degree symbol maybe. And then you got your G. So this is F compose G of X. So that's what we call the composition operator. Okay. So what this is really telling me, F compose G of X, this really means f of g of x. So to work this kind of problem, the first thing you would do is find g of x. Second thing I would do to this, is find f of g of x, which basically means put the answer from g of x into the f of x equation. So put the answer from g of x into the f of x equation. Okay, so I find my g of x. Once I got that answer, that then goes and replaces the x in my f of x equation. Now the second one, they reverse the order and this one is g compose f of x. So that symbol looking uh, in the middle is still going to be the composition operator. So y'all, this one, since it's G of F, this would be like finding G of F of X. So when they got it, I call this golf sometimes and that one fog. But when it looks like golf, the first thing we do, we're going to find f of x Once we find what f of x is, we then put that answer from the f of x into the g of x equation. So put the answer from f of x into the g of x equation. Okay. <clears throat> this was sort of be stuff you would do if you was doing a physics class or chemistry class. Say I wanted to find a force, but in order to find a force, I need to know the acceleration. So I'd have an equation to find my acceleration. And then I would take that answer and put it into the equation to find my force, okay? So that's sort of what's going on here. So we're gonna start doing some of these examples and you'll see what's happening with these, okay? All right, so the first one on this example, we're gonna let x, f of x, we're going to let f of x equal negative 3x minus 1.
we're going to let g of x equal x squared minus two. So I got my two functions. So what they want us to find is f compose g of a negative three. Okay, so really, if I'm going to write it in this symbolism, I'm finding f of g of a negative three. So this told me up here, first thing I do, got to do is find my g of x, which for me would be a g of negative three. Once I get that answer, then I will plug that into my f equation. So y'all, these are basically two part steps. First, we're gonna find g of that negative three. And really when you write it like this, you work the innermost parentheses and then head out to the f, okay? So g of negative three is gonna be my g of x equation with a negative three into that x. So that's gonna give me a negative three squared. And then I got what, a minus two. Okay, so I still got a x squared minus two. X is now a negative three. All right, so we're going to work that and see what we get. So let's see, negative three squared is a positive nine. And then I bring down my minus two. And then my nine minus two gives me seven. So since g of negative three equals seven, I'm now going to put seven into the f of x equation. So that means I'm finding f of seven. So then we go to our f equation, which is uh, negative three x minus one. So we got negative three times the x, which is seven minus one. So it still looks like negative three X minus one, plug it in for our seven. So we'll work that. Let's see, negative three times seven, it'll give you a negative 21 minus one. For a final answer of negative 22. So given these two functions, S composed G of negative three equals negative 22. And all math lab won't send that blank is that final answer you gave me, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pull this down for you. So question on that one. Were y'all able to follow me on that? I got some class a little late. Uh, did I miss anything major or this is just the first part of it? Oh, uh, this is the first part. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so on this next one then, let's let f of x equal 3x plus 4, g of x is going to equal x squared minus 3x minus 5. Well, let me separate them two problems there. All righty. All right, so I got my F and my G. So they want us to find G compose F of a six. So this one's opposite of what I just did. This one means G of F of a six. So it'll still be a two-step problem. First, first. We got to find F of six. Okay. Once I get the answer for my F of six, I'll then plug that into my G equation. So, y'all, let's see here. F of six is going to be my G equation with a six in there for them X's. 
So I got a six squared minus three times six minus five. All right, so let's see what we got. Six squared is 36 minus three times six is 18 and then minus that five. So let's see, 36 minus 18 is what, uh, 18? And then 18 minus five gives me a 13 for my F of six. So here we go, second step. We're gonna put 13. Wait, weren't, weren't we finding the F of X? So wouldn't the equation be the three X plus four? Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> time out. Yeah, I can't even read my board up here. Good job. <laughs> All right, y'all, so let me rewrite that problem. Yeah, I started looking at my problem from that's above it, so I, let me fix that. Well, I'm glad y'all caught that before I went through that whole thing. All right, so we said we're finding G of F of A6. All right, so I'm going to let y'all catch up. I just rewrote that problem again. And you know what's sad? I wrote F of six here, but I put it in a G equation. All right, so here we go. So first find F of six, which will be three times the six plus that four. All right, y'all, that's gonna give me what, an 18 plus four, which will give me 22. So we got our F of six, which is 22. So our second step, put 22 in for the X's in our G of X. So we said that meant we were finding G of 22. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Look at this. 22 in my G equation gives me a 22 squared minus three times 22 minus five. So I'm gonna punch that on my calculator. So we got that calculator. So let's see, 22 squared. So there's 22, I'm gonna square it with that X squared key. 22 squared gives us 484. Minus the three times 22. Three times 22 gives us 66, and then minus the five. Well, then y'all, you would just subtract that. So let's see what the calculator is gonna give me for that. All right, so let me see what this chat says. The chat's ain't showing. Okay, so y'all got it on there, 413. Good job. So that gave me 413, which is our final answer. So these aren't too bad. You just got to keep up with the flow, right? So... Look at what order they're giving to you. Because um, if you notice, these almost go right to left 
is what you're doing. You're taking the six, put it in the F, and then that answer in the G, okay? All right, so I got one more of these, and then we're going to deal with problems with our domains, and we're going to actually use interval notation. So let's knock out one more problem here first. So this one, we're going to let f of x equal 5x plus 4. g of x is going to equal an x to the third. We're going to find f composed g of a negative 3. So let's see. In symbolism, this would be an f of g of negative three. All right, so just like we'll go, the first thing on this one we're gonna find is that g of three, g of negative three, okay? So my g equation is x to the third, so that's gonna be a negative three to the third power. All right, let's see, what's that? Uh, negative 27. So since G of negative three gave me a negative 27, I can now do my second step, put negative 27 into the F of X. So we're finding F of that negative, 27. All right, so y'all, F equation was 5X plus 4. So that's going to give me 5 times that negative 27 plus 4. So let's see, 5 and negative 27 is a negative uh, 135 plus my 4. And it gives me 130. All of it. Watch out. Remember, make sure that's a. There you go. You got it. Negative 134. All right. So, like I said, these are not too bad. You just got to keep up with the flow. Am I going F first and then G? Or am I going G first and then F? All right, y'all, so I'm going to give y'all a second to write this, and then we'll learn about interval notation. All right, turn this over. All right, y'all, so like I said, we're going to learn interval notation. So in interval notation, we write our domain using parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how we would represent all real numbers. And then from there, I'll show you how we exclude numbers. So the domain of a function is typically all real numbers. So in interval notation, we're going to use, almost looks like an ordered pair. Um, but it starts from the first point and then it ends at the furthest point. Now, all real numbers on that X, my X goes both directions. Do y'all know what it's called if I'm writing that X line out left and I'm getting more negative and I get more negative and I get more negative. We say that that's heading off towards what we call negative infinity.
You know, if I go to the right, I'm going up all my positive numbers. I keep adding one and I keep adding one. There you go, I'm headed towards positive infinity. So this right here, that interval using curvy parentheses goes from negative infinity to infinity to represent all real numbers. Now, the parentheses I use when Um, when you don't have equals in it and it's like a not equals, you're going to use parentheses like we did on our fraction domains. Okay. Brackets. We use brackets. X can equal these A's. Now, you will not be using brackets on tonight's homework. We use the brackets when we're doing radical domains. And those would be from square roots and stuff. So since we're dealing with fractions, we'll be using parentheses. Also, Infinity and negative infinity always have parentheses around those, okay? All right, so to exclude a number from a domain. We use the union. So this means and in math. Okay. So let me show you how I'm going to exclude this number. So for example, to exclude seven from the domain, So this is show you how to exclude. So say I've done a problem and I had a fraction and if I put seven into my variable, it gave me a zero in the denominator. So I need to exclude seven from the domain. So y'all, it's always gonna start with negative infinity. From negative infinity, you go left to right on that number line. You would hit that seven. When you hit the seven, you're gonna use curvy parentheses, and you're going to union around that seven using that and. Now, since I use curvy parentheses, remember, that means my x is not equal to that number, okay? So I start at negative infinity. I can't be seven, so I union around it. Once I get to the other side of the seven, I'm headed off towards Positive infinity. There you go. So watch this. For example, to exclude zero and five from the domain. So now I'm going to show you how I would exclude two numbers. So, I would still start at negative infinity. Now, remember, you got to go left to right on these numbers. So, I would hit zero before I hit five. So, the first number I got a union around is that zero. So, I put my zero, close parentheses, use my union, and then I put my zero. Because now I'm going to the right side of the zero. But, y'all, from that zero, where do I go? I go to the five, good job. 
So that means you're going to union around that five. And then from five, we're off towards our positive infinity. And y'all, that's all we're going to do in this class from now on when we're in interval notation. If we exclude a number, we're going to union around it and move on, okay? All right, so we're learning this. Um, they're not going to give us answers where we put those answers like x, x is a real number, and x cannot equal. This is more shorthand, so that's what they're going to want us to do from now on. So let's work an example where they hit us with a domain. And then these last three problems will be sort of, um, we'll do the F of G, the G compose F, and then we'll find domains of each. So we're gonna find F compose G of X, G compose F of X, and then the domains of each. So for my first one, they're giving us f of x is going to equal x plus 24. g of x is going to equal x minus 24. If I want to find the fog first and then its domain, then I'll find the golf and its domain. So F composed G of X is really F of G of X. Now, let me alert y'all to something else they didn't do. They want me to find F composed G of X, G composed F of X, but they did not give me any numbers to plug into these functions. So since they didn't give me numbers to plug in, I'm not going to be able to plug single numbers into these other functions, okay? So watch what we're going to do. First thing I would do on this one is find g of x. Well, y'all, we don't got to look far because they gave me g of x right here. They said, hey, your g of x is going to equal x minus 24. We're not giving you a number for the X, so you cannot simplify that at all. So since we cannot simplify that any further, our second step, we're gonna put X minus 24, because that's what G of X says it is. We're gonna put that X minus 24 into the F of X. So if you're putting the X minus 24 into F of X, you're really finding me a F of X minus 24. And remember, this is just telling me what I'm putting in for my X's, which is what I got right here. So F of X minus 24, where your F of X equation is X plus 24, so right here for that X, we're going to put X minus 24. But y'all don't forget, the plus 24 needs to come down also. So now you got your X plus 24. Okay. So when they don't give you numbers, they get a little tricky at times. So question, can you simplify this expression? Yeah, she's going to give me an X because those uh, negative 24, positive 24, those are going to cancel. So we end up with an X. All right, so here's the thing. Let's find that domain of this one. So 
So if you remember last week when I did domains, there was only one thing at this point we're worried about, and that is fractions. So what I got to do, I got to look at my first equation I worked with, g of x. That function did not have any fractions, so that function's good for all real numbers. Then you come to your second function, x minus 24 plus 24, which simplified to an x. No fractions in that function either. So since we do not have any fractions to deal with, what's the domain? Oh, let's see, y'all said all real and all real. I'm just going to put what? Negative infinity to my positive infinity and be done. Good job. All right, so that was our fog. So now we can do our G of F. So I'll work it on this side. So this will be G composed F of X, which is like G of F of X. So for this one first, we're gonna find f of x, we all, we gave us f of x right here. f of x was x plus 24. And if you notice, once again, I cannot simplify that. So since we cannot simplify that, we're going to put x plus 24 into our g of x which means you're finding me a G of X plus 24. So y'all, my X equation is X minus 24. And in place of that X right there, they want me to put X plus 24. So I'm gonna get the X plus 24. At the end is still the minus 24. Oh, and guess what? Ooh, that looks like. Right. What'd y'all just say? And it's going to be the same answer X. It's going to be the same answer because those cancel out again. Really, the only thing that happened on this problem since those two functions were so related, basically, we're just spinning the order when it did the add and subtracting was all basically. So you got to X again. So now, You got to give me the domain. Positive yeah. infinity. I mean, I mean negative, negative infinity and positive infinity. Negative infinity, positive infinity. No fractions once again. All right, y'all, let me let one in real quick. Let me see. Oh, she must have just got kicked off. All right, yeah, same one on that. Good job. All right, so this one, they're going to turn it up a little bit. They're not going to make it plus 24 or minus 24 on this one. So for this one, we're going to find our f of g of x, g composed f of x, and the domains of each. All right, so let's see what they did for f of x on this one. Oh, it's not bad, it's just an x plus two. G of x is a three x squared minus five x minus two. All right, so I guess we'll start with our F composed G of X. Which will equal F of G of X. All right, y'all, so let's go to our first step. Find G of X. 
Well, they gave us Gia Banks. They didn't give me a number to put in again. And uh, can I simplify that? So G of X is going to equal 3X squared minus 5X minus 2. Guess what? Okay, so y'all doing my second step, it looks like, on my chat. So now, since we cannot sub, uh, simplify that, our second step is to put 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 into the uh, f of x. All right, so let's see. If I put that into f of x, I'm really finding f of that 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 which we for our F equation, X plus two. So now for that X, we put three X squared minus five X minus two. And y'all remember at the end is definitely a plus two. So that's what I was talking about by putting a whole function into another one. If you cannot simplify these functions, then they're going in for those X's, okay? All right, so let me see. So can y'all simplify that? Yes. Definitely. And looks like the only thing you're going to do is cancel out those like terms. So we end up with a 3X squared minus 5X minus two. So who wants to shot at my domain? Why does the, why did you have a minus two? Why didn't you stop at five X? Oh, I did, why did I put that? Okay. I said to cancel that. I'm, I'm Good Lord. So. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> no, y'all keep on me because sometimes I say something and then I write stuff to my mind and my hands ain't doing the same. No, that's what they did. They canceled some of them, so definitely. Well, I'm getting old, I guess. All right, how about a domain? All real numbers? All real numbers. I don't see no fractions on this one. So all real numbers, and then we get to move on to the G of F of X. So I'm actually going to use another page for that. So next was G of F of X, which is like a G of F of X. So let me move this back up. All right, so first we're going to know, well, we didn't do the F of G, so now we're doing G of F. Okay. So first I got to find F of X. Well, they gave us F of X. Remember, that was what uh, uh, X plus two. Now, since we cannot do anything to that X plus two, that whole X plus two will go into the X's of my G equation. So put X plus two in for each X of my G of X. Which means you're finding me a G of X plus two. Oh, y'all, so remember my G of X was a pretty long equation. It was three times X plus two squared minus five times that X plus two 
and then minus two at the end. So three X squared minus five times the X minus two. So let's see, Aunt Sally said start with parentheses, but all that's in those parentheses is an X plus two. So we cannot simplify inside parentheses. Next, she wants me to do exponents. Well, I do have an exponent sitting there. So that means we got to square that X plus two. So I want to do what I call work on the side. And I'm going to figure out what X plus two squared equals. Biggest mistake I get in math when someone sees the X plus two squared, they square the X and then they square the two and they end up with something like an X squared plus four. That is totally wrong. When you have a binomial, which is two terms followed by an exponent like this, that's telling you how many times to write your binomial. So I would write X plus two twice. And then you're gonna foil this. So when you square a binomial, you foil it. So X times X is X squared. X times two is two X. Two times X is two X. And then that two times two is a positive four. Then you would combine your like terms and get an X squared plus four X plus four. So what they know now is that y'all know how to foil. So they're going to throw foiling at you whenever they can in these problems, okay? So now remember, all I did on that step is I was squaring the X plus two. So I'm going to bring this and put it where that was. So that now gives me three times the X squared plus four X plus four. Then I'm gonna bring down the rest of this equation, minus five times my X plus two, minus the two at the end. So y'all, all we did on that step was square the X plus two. Now exponents are gone. So our Aunt Sally wants us to multiply or divide from left to right. Well, we don't have anything to divide, but we do got stuff we're gonna multiply. By using our distributed property, we're going to distribute the three through the first parentheses and then the negative five through the second parentheses. So distributing the three, three times X squared is three X squared. Three times four X is 12 X. Three times four is 12. Then you're going to do the negative five through these parentheses. Negative five times X is negative five X. Negative five times two is a negative 10. And then at the end, bring down your negative two. Now, we have a lot of like terms to combine. So X squareds only got the one X squared. So that's gonna come down as a three X squared. Oh, I see some X's we can add. Well, the 12 X's and the negative five X's give us a seven X. All right, so that leaves me a bunch of numbers. So that's a 12 minus 10 is two. And then two minus two is zero. So that cancels out, good job. And our final answer is a three X squared plus seven X. So notice I didn't bring my numbers down this time, right? <laughs> All righty, so since you're getting good on domains, what's my domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. So negative infinity 
the palms of infinity. Now we'll say this on this last problem I'm about to do, our domain will be a little bit different, okay? All right, y'all, so number six for y'all on homework will be like this next one I'm doing. Same thing, we're gonna find our fog of X, our gulf of X, and domains of beach. Okay. So let's see, this time f of x is going to equal 3 over 1 minus 2x. g of x is going to equal 1 divided by x. So if you notice, both of these are fractions. All right, so first let's do our fog. So once again, that's like f of g of an x. So the first thing we're going to do is find our g of x. Well, they gave us that, and they didn't give me a number, so g of x is just going to be 1 over x. So guess what? That's the first thing I'm going to worry about in a little bit about my domain because you got a fraction with the variable in the bottom right there, okay? Now remember, the second step is I'm going to put that 1 over x into the x's for my f of x. So that means I'm going to be finding f of 1 over x. So let's see, f looks like a 3 divided by 1 minus 2. In place of that x, I'm going to put 1 over x. So y'all, the first thing we're going to do to this, I'm going to multiply this two by that one over X. So to make that multiply, I'm going to put a one under the two and multiply straight across. So I'm going to have my three on top. And then on bottom will now be one minus two divided by X. All right, so what, we need to do to simplify this. I got a fraction right here inside of a fraction. And we need this to look like a fraction with a numerator and denominator or a single number. So what we got to do is try to get rid of this fraction. So since this fraction has an X on it, what you would do, you would multiply all parts of the fraction by x. We're going to multiply by x because that's what's on bottom of this fraction. So y'all, let me show you what's going to happen. All parts. So remember, what I do to the bottom of a fraction, I'm going to do to the top. So that means I'm going to multiply the top by the x. On bottom, I got a 1. I'm going to multiply that by x. And then this 2 over x, I'm going to multiply that by x. So everybody gets multiplied by the x. Now look what that leaves me on top. 3 times x is 3x. On bottom, 
one times x is one x minus, we all look what happens to the last part of this. I got two divided by x times x. These x's cancel out and leave me with my two. Now, we cannot simplify this any further. So that would be our final answer. But y'all notice, they just want a numerator and a denominator. They don't like fractions with fractions inside of them. This is what we call a complex fraction. And it means it's not simplified when it's in that form. All righty, for the domain. First of all, you're worried about that g of x fraction because it's got an x in the bottom. So for this fraction, there's only one number that that x cannot equal. Okay. Now, so what's the only number that my x cannot equal right here? Two. Oh, what'd y'all just say? Two. Two, two, right? Well, remember, uh, if I two. put a two in there, that gives me one half. Hmm. But there's one number that I cannot have in the bottom of that fraction. One, a zero. A zero. Because if I do one divided by zero, that gives me undefined. So for the first part of this, I'm going to have to exclude zero. Now, let's go through the process. This final answer has a fraction in a variable in the denominator. So there's only one number that this X cannot equal that'll make that undefined. And that might've been the answer you gave me while ago if you was looking at that fraction. Yeah, my bad. That's the one I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, because if that's a two, two minus two is zero, three X divided by zero makes that undefined. So we're going to have to exclude a two also. So a zero from this fraction and a two from that fraction makes this undefined. So you want to take a crack at this uh, domain or y'all want me to write this one? You should write that down, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we know they're all starting at negative infinity. So from negative infinity, I go until I hit my first number, which was zero. I'm going to union around that zero. From zero, I'm going until I hit my second number, which is two. Cannot equal two, so I'm going to union around that two. And that's my second number to exclude, so then I'm off towards positive infinity. So that's sort of tricky. These complex fractions here, they're sort of tricky. You gotta be careful with those. That's, so I don't know what Is this gonna be one of those problems? Well, I yeah. know it's gonna be one of those problems, but I'm saying, can there be only one of the fraction problems? Yeah, this is the only one you're gonna have with a fraction. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's all I wanna know. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't like them fractions. Nice. All right, so uh, so that means now we're on what our g of f of x, which will be like g of f of x. So first, this time, I'm going to find my f of x. And let's see, what did they give me? Oh, f of x was 3 divided by one minus two X. So here's the thing. I cannot simplify that, but in a little bit, since I got a variable in the bottom of that fraction, I'm going to have to worry about what that number is going to give me later when I do my domain, okay? But for now, I got my F of X. So now I'm going to put three divided by one minus two X. 
into the x of g of x. So now we're putting a big ugly fraction in for our x's. So we're finding g of three over one minus two x. So let's see, my g equation was just one over x. So it's gonna be one over three divided by one minus two x. Now I will say this, I still have a fraction inside of a fraction. In this one, we're gonna simplify different than the one I did a while ago. Because this one, since I got a one on top, I'm gonna rewrite this as one divided by three over one minus two X. You'll see this one I had, uh, one fraction on the bottom, the one wall go, remember the one wall go had two different parts on the bottom with that little fraction. So that's why I'm sort of doing this one different. Now y'all listen here, what's the rule for dividing fractions? I'm gonna bring down that one. I'm gonna change from division into multiplication. And if I change from division to multiplication, I flip that second fraction. So if you flip that, you get one minus two X over the three. So just like you do with numbers, flip it. And guess what? One times anything is the anything. So our final answer, I end up with a one minus two X over three. But look, there's a three in the bottom of that fraction and it does not have a variable. So the only fraction that's gonna bug us when we do the domain is that one minus two X, okay? Hold on, wait, why? That's what the final answer. Oh wait, look at mine. Okay. Yeah, this was uh, just the final answer. Okay. So for my domain, I'm going to set this equal to zero and see what number that gives me. So set one minus two X equal to zero. And this is for our domain. So one minus two X equals zero. Let's subtract one from both sides. Negative two X equals negative one. Then by, divide both of them by that negative two. So I get X equals negative, negative makes that a one half. So that tells me if you put one half in here, two times one half is one, one minus one would make that a zero. So we need to exclude the one half. And you know, if you notice, same thing there, it would still be the one half because that's the same bottom. Once we get to this part, there's not even a variable in the bottom. So the only number we're excluding is one half. So our domain will start at negative infinity, cruising along the x-axis till I come to my one half. So since I cannot equal one half, I'm going to union around it and then go from one half to Positive infinity. But if you do notice this, every single domain I did today started at negative infinity and ended at positive infinity. You just had to figure out if we had to exclude numbers or not, okay? All right, so that is 9.1. Um, so let me go back to my main screen. Y'all got this wrote, right? You're going to, uh, record, you recording it right now though, right? Yeah, we're recording right now. Okay. So questions on that. Now. I don't have any questions, but I have a comment. 
Okay. Um, so let me say one thing. So support has two problems in it. And the support problems, you're just finding stuff like F of two. So you're going to be putting two in for the X's and seeing what you get. It was sort of getting us ready for this uh, uh, lesson. All right, so. Do what now? Did you put a fraction in the support too? No. Mm, okay. <laughs> no, it's basic. It, it's basically, it's pretty mild compared to these. So I think I, uh, I got a little discouraged with that one. I think it's like 25 steps to each one. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see any fractions in, in the support. When I did. No, that's not funny. That's just too hard. Go on now. Nothing. You ain't get the joke. I'm not saying it. <laughs> All right. So I heard a comment earlier. What's the comment? I think Ricky said something. I think he's talking to you. Oh, okay. From that wall go. Okay. All righty, y'all. So um, let me say. Weather's coming this week, they say. So if they cancel classes at the school, they will probably cancel our online also. So we'll have to check Thursday morning and see what's happening, okay? Um, and if you got text alerts, they'll text alert you and let you know whether we're having classes or not. Okay. Oh, we can get text alerts because I just get emails. Uh, they'll email, but they'll send text alerts if you if you go to your portal, uh -huh. and when you log in somewhere on there, it should say Rave Alerts. I think it is. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. We good to go though, right? Yeah, yeah, you good. Oh. I don't see it. I'm in my portal right now. No, I'll tell you where I, um, where did I see that at? Uh, we'll try to find a page. Uh, oh, here it is. I see it. It has a, um, it's a caution sign. It says safety and text alerts. I see it. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to share my screen real quick and show you where I'm at and seeing it. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, let's see. So I'm on the main portal page. If you log into the portal page, look over here on the left side where you find your email. You'll see QList. I don't know what that is. App Extender. But then right under that is a Rave Alerts. So you just click that Rave Alerts, and it will have you click this little link here in the middle to verify your cell phone number and provider. Um, register it, and then you'll get um you'll get text into your phone okay <laughs> yeah, thank you can we go now well i already know we gotta go so bye yeah so so y'all let me stop this recording